Good morning, folks. Incredible news articles out today. We're going to take a look at those and an upcoming earthquake warning. But first, let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're checking out the last 24 hours on our star. A small filament was organizing due south of center disk, but it snapped down and disappeared this morning. We're quiet. On the northwestern departing limb, a couple solar tornadoes danced out of view, but gave us an amazing coronal cavity before doing so. Same vortex magnetism making them stand up is also carving out circles in the plasma-laden corona. There were no solar flares, and we almost have another no-sunspot day and a blank disk. Solar wind continues to calm down, and Earth's magnetic shield does as well, actually a risk of dropping into cosmic ray alerts by tonight. Let's take a look at SOHO LASCO C3 coronagraphs. Been a very calm couple of days on our star. No flare activity and no big CMEs, but the quiet was finally broken yesterday as a plasma filament that departed a few days earlier lifted and released off the far side. This one does have coupling potential with Earth, and that matters because the timing lines up with tomorrow's full moon and the introduction once more of the northern IMF earthquake influence. The tiny leading extension is passing now, but the bulk mass of the opening is here too, just behind him swinging in. Quakes could be ready to ramp back up. On to this, the most superluminous supernova ever is being called the consumption of a star by a black hole after its spaghettification. While the new electric universe theories would love a major rewrite of black hole physics, the reality of something massive and black hole-like does exist and does eat everything around it. While this observer falls on the side of needing a rewrite, it cannot be denied that this event was likely resulting of interactions between two massive objects. Link is below. Also folks, the more incredible news is that two members of this team are observers, and this is an incredible paper. Solar flares are not random, especially once a sequence of flares begins, especially at one sunspot group. They form patterns and make timing subsequent events very easy. This is the principle hypothesized in the 10th Deeper Look episode, not this year, ever, from January last year. And this page is one of the public Deeper Looks, so anyone can go watch it. You'll see the exact same thing as we see in that paper, sequence flaring, giving itself away in sunspot excitement patterns. Quick note, Cali has gotten deadly and the toll continues rising. Another arctic blast is on the way behind it. A touch of extra caution could mean you get to watch tomorrow's news. Folks, I had a pleasant conversation with an extremely nice USGS employee yesterday, and we confirmed that the first Italy quake in October indeed matches their definition of a foreshock, not a main shock. That's important because it means the streak of consecutive main shock magnitude 6 earthquakes that hit alert zones was not 7, but 10. Details at quakewatch.net. Right now, we've got your pressure and radar forecast, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. <laughs>